Thank you, Jonas, Jessica, Andreas, please come on up. Come on down. Thank you. Uh, you come here. Yep. Yeah. Uh, David, do you want to play that other film? Thank you all so much. I just wanted to try out silence for once. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like the other end of my usual scale, as you probably saw in the introduction. Yeah. But it's really nice, actually. Just like being. Hmm? Thank you for the film. It's really, Thank really, you. really a great <coughs> film. We do have some Twitter questions, of yeah. course. Um, <clears throat> shall we go for an easy one? Oh, yeah, this is, this, this is one that I wanted to ask as well, so I'm going straight in with it. From Dino Olivier, um, is there any deeper meaning whatsoever behind the question mark on the haystack which they pass on the road? Yeah, it's, it's actually is because uh, the whole film actually is some kind of question, question mark. mark. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, it was deliberate. Yeah. Was it an expensive like, effect, or did you just put a question mark? Oh, yes. But we weren't oh, yes, allowed to do it. Huh? We weren't allowed to do it, so we had to take it away again. Yeah. Because Jonas it, it, always yeah. Wanted, to, wanted to do things that's not allowed. He's like, OK, now we're going to do this instead. And then Andreas always came in and was like, oh, dear. <laughs> no, <Jonas. laughs> don't do that. <laughs> and we did it anyway. So. Mm. Andreas, what was, the, what was the worst not allowed thing that you kind of ended up needing to produce from the film? Uh, the dream sequence was the worst, I think. That just came out of nowhere. It wasn't <laughs> <laughs> well, we had some trouble there because uh, it wasn't supposed to rain. 
Ah. We were shooting the, the scene for two days, and on the second day was, uh, well, rain, as you saw. And, uh, but then you made something up, which was, which was really good instead. So. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you had a fantastic cast, obviously. How did you find this actress and, your, and her two brothers? What was it? What? It, it, it wasn't too easy because uh, th there's not a, a lot of uh, Roman actress uh, professional in Sweden. So we had a... a, 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 we, had a we didn't have a lot to choose from. And uh, there are also... <laughs> There were also a, a lot of uh, preservation because uh, when we're going to do the film, the, the Romani people in Sweden was a little bit anxious because how, how are you going to portray us portray this way? Because uh, there are a lot of uh, cliches how to. Sure. Portray them, and it, it was a sort of a stigmata that are, are you going to mm -hmm. take us serious? Or are you going to, to, to portray us mm -hmm. the way we used to be? So it was a, a lot of confidence that we had to put, we, had, we, we got to know them. Mm -hmm. it, it, was, it was a, uh, a casting session that were a, a large period of time because we, we had to make sure that we are here for the right reason. For sure. you, you don't have to be scared of us. Mm -hmm. uh, We're uh, not on safari here. No, no. Yeah. So, so oh. I think that was... Did Je yeah. Jessica, do you, like, you contributed to the sense of the world of the characters from your own background? Was there a, a relationship between you and Jonas in the writing or, or at least in the creation of the world? Um, do you mean like if I have a um, connection with the character and... Yeah, connection with the character, but you are Roma yourself. Yeah. And so you, you come from within that community. Exactly. So were you able to bring sort of the, the truth of, of, of your community into the film? Um, yeah, a, li a little beyond bit. Beyond acting. Yeah, <laughs> a, a little bit because um, during the whole film shooting, uh, you know, we all hang out a lot, and it was Jonas and me, and uh, also Christopher and Daniel, that's not here. Um, and we were talking a lot about the gypsy culture um, and how we are at home with our families and what's the difference between uh, all of the groups so that Jonas could get a, how do you say, um, a good view mm -hmm. before he uh, start, started filming it. Yeah. It feels incredibly truthful. Yeah. yeah. And that sense of family, even though it's spread a thousand kilometers away, you never doubt it. It's just like it's, it's embedded in the characters. We have another question here. Um, it's from Ezeline. Uh, she says, I saw Jan Sandstrom compose the music. Uh, why did you choose classical music? And then she says in brackets, love the film and the music as well. Yeah. No, but, but I, I always, uh, I didn't want to, to make the obvious choice mm -hmm. uh, to Romani uh, music. Uh, I wanted to, it to be in, in, embedded in an in a old Swedish classic tradition. Mm -hmm. We said the the Swedish romance classical music <clears throat> and uh, I, I heard a radio program with Jan Sandström mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, yeah, that's the guy, that's the guy who's going to write the music for this, uh, for this picture and it was love at first sight. Uh, very, very nice uh, collaboration, and we, uh, and we also 
uh, we also we went uh, went old fashioned and, and mm -hmm. uh, played it with a with a whole orchestra and, and like that. So. Also, <coughs> your your composition of many of the shots, just simply the black and white for starters, but there's something somehow, I suppose, classical in terms of photography in mm -hmm. them as well. Like there are mm -hmm. moments in the film where you just wish you could stop it mm -hmm. and look at that composition. Mm -hmm. Really super beautiful mm -hmm. um, in a film that in other ways might appear to be kind of gritty and realist and mm -hmm. it, it has a, all these other layers going on. So mm -hmm. the classical music, the beautiful composition. Mm -hmm. um, is that one of the things that, that you, you know, that sort of gave you joy in making the film is, is clashing different things or, or layering them? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah much so. <laughs> uh, uh, yep. uh, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 but it is a film that, that uh, it will keep you aware that <coughs> it comes from tradition. Mm -hmm. We we not we try to just, to, yeah. to re mm -hmm. went the wheel. Yeah. Uh, uh, I want to, the people to to feel like, you know, there's there's something going on before us. For sure. Yeah. You're moving <coughs> a progression of something. Yeah. Andreas, um, producing a film like this, which doesn't necessarily <coughs> set script stage, have the hallmarks of things that people necessarily feel comfortable with when they're financing a film. How was it to find partners to finance this film and convince them that, yeah, that is all the dialogue the film needs and that is all the narrative? We're not leaning too heavily on something you might call plot? You know, what was that process like for you as a producer? <laughs> it wasn't... It wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> but we had the, the, the Swedish Film Institute on board early, and also the uh, Filmpool Nord up in the northern part of Sweden. And, uh, well, Jonas is quite good to speak for himself in, in Swedish. <laughs> maybe, well, maybe not. You have your arguments for what kind of things. You don't say nothing. You, you mean in Swedish he speaks? Yeah, he does. <laughs> but not in English. Not in English. <laughs> but wasn't the question for you? Uh, uh. Yeah, but... That was totally <laughs> a question for you. Yeah. No, I, I, I really, I mean it. I'm going to repose it. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, it's a really exciting challenge to take on something that doesn't fit the usual molds of what mm. easily get funded. And, you know, mm. that's, as a producer, that's a really strong choice to make. Yeah. rather than make a romantic comedy. Yeah. So I, I guess I'm just saying great. <laughs> and uh, you had it at Torino Film Lab as yeah, well. Yeah, as well, yeah. So that put it out into the world a little yeah. bit and got some attention. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we, we, we're, we're really grateful that we got to make this movie because we didn't, uh, this is not going to be made. <laughs> there, everyone's going to turn it down. Yeah. Uh, but so we... Yeah, we were happy. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a question. The art hotel. Yeah. Is, oh, tell us about that. The, the, uh, the art house. Art house. Uh, the art house, sorry. Yeah. The, <laughs> the art, art house. house. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Is that real? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> oh. nothing, no, oh. nothing is real. <laughs> it's just make believe. You made it up. We made it up. Damn. Yeah. I really hoped it was real. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> um, about the dialogue, I mean, I just mentioned that there's little of it. Mm. Um, and your delivery and the characters play, the, the actors who play the brothers is, you said something to me earlier, we never smile. Was that like a rule? We yeah. do not smile on camera, and in delivery, we do not yeah, give that, any intonation. Yeah, that, that was exactly. The rule. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, don't smile, be really like low, and uh, once they uh, said cut, we all just like uh, broke out and laugh, laughs and uh, <laughs> couldn't hold each other, but because it's hard. To have that right. that kind of face, stone face, yeah. yeah, yeah, and just keep it that way. After a while, you feel depressed, and you feel like you're nothing more than you're that. like going into it. Yeah. You're becoming that. Yeah. 
And then, but it's, it's there for that beautiful reason of the last mm. scene, mm. the moment when the light comes on. Mm. And so the, the first smiles that mm. crack across all their yeah. faces are just like enormous. It's like the sun going up. Mm. So it's, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's beautifully constructed and managed, the whole thing. Um, in a way, it's a, it's a very minimalistic work. Like earlier today, we had a you know reversioning of a, a reworking of Blood Wedding by Lorca, mm -hmm. massive theatrical, cinematic, passionate, and this is a lovely closing for our for our season of IFFR live films because it's the complete contrast of that. Mm -hmm. um, minimalism, though, it 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 always invites really close scrutiny. Like if you put little in the frame or you leave a lot of negative space, people are going to look even more closely at whatever you give them. Mm -hmm. It's like spoon feeding hungry people. Mm -hmm. So that's where you get the questions about the question mark on the haystack. Mm -hmm. um, how much planning was there? How much, how much did you think about, if I put that there, it's going to be read as a symbol, it's going to, I mean, not the question mark, but other aspects of, of the film. The art house. Uh, <laughs> I, I should say 100%. Everything. Yeah. It's, it's sort of a, it's sort of a, sort of a architectural mm -hmm. construct of this film. So there, there isn't nothing in the frame that wasn't thought out in the beginning. Perhaps sounds boring, but, but the, in these days, but that's how it was made. No, no, it does have a constructed feel, yeah. purposeful. Yeah. Yeah. There's a question here from El Salim. Was the object that they had to deliver a clock from the start, or were there other choices along the way? So it's a little bit connected to what I just asked you. Was it always a clock? No. No, it wasn't. Uh, in the first, it was a road movie that was going to be at my birthplace in Sweden, uh, okay. uh, who is in, in the north, okay. and to the south of Sweden, uh, who is in Stockholm, where mm -hmm. I live now. And it's a journey about uh, 1,000 kilometers. And I have made this journey uh, a lot of times. So that was the first. So I, I, I want to have the road movie that made this trip. And I wanted to have three people mm -hmm. in the car. Mm -hmm. Because it, it, it's a, sort of a chemistry there. But I didn't have why. Why are they going to make this trip? How long did it take you to find the why? Uh, several years. <laughs> uh. Here's another, uh, it's, it says here, superb comedic timing and cinematography. Um, could you share some of the sources of some of your inspiration with us? Like, perhaps the composition of the, of the shots, something like that. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we had we, we the, the, the we have the most inspiration is actually from still photography. Mm -hmm. We had any uh, particular uh, photographer? Yeah, yeah Levis Baltz. Uh, he's an American photographer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so and uh, also you know mural paintings. Mm -hmm. uh, in all sort of kinds, uh, used to... American photographer makes sense. It has sometimes an aspect, like a feeling of the West. Yeah, yeah, American yeah. American West, yeah. of course. And, the, and then, of course, you can't... I can't hide it. The uh, Jim Jarmusch, Stranger Than Paradise. It's, it's almost uh, an, an homage, an homage, almost to, an homage to that film. But we want to do it in a more and, yeah, it because, big, 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 because it, it, it's a film. Uh, there is a very low def, mm -hmm. and we we want to put it in high def. Yeah, that's a big success, by the way. <laughs> the Jamish <Jammer> thing, <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Um, here's one. You must be really big fans of Holland with that huge cheese slicer. <laughs> You can say no. 
No, I, I don't understand the question. The cheese slicer. Yeah. The big one. Yeah. That's sort of like a Dutch icon. Oh my God. It is. I know you have them in Sweden did, as well. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, yep. the Dutch see are now go, uh, interpreting the symbol yeah. of your deep affection for the Netherlands. Ah. And the reason you're here tonight. Mm. No, no. Every home has at least one of these, if not two or three. That's nice. <laughs> Very important. Yeah. I don't know. Um, here's one. Is the Saab your dream car? We're hitting all the big questions now. Absolutely. I, I have grown up in a Saab family. My father was a Saab mechanician, uh, so I, my my parents, I, I was delivered in a Saab. Uh, you're, so, yeah. you're a Saab baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, uh, Saab is very close to my heart. We have to wind up, but. Um, mm. Jessica, really a marvelous performance. Thank you. Looking forward to the things we see you in next. Um, Andreas, I'm sure the next one will be as challenging <laughs> and great Probably. job. Thank Jonas, thank you so much. I mean, this has been, as I say, our last film of IFFR Live. It's been a roller coaster journey of different styles, different filmmakers, different audiences, and of course, all the cinemas across Europe and all the different countries. And this has been like a really nice, calm way to go out for me and for us. So thank you to all our cinemas across Europe. Thank you to all of our partners. Thank you to the great tech team behind here. And I think I can safely say we are coming to the end of IFFR Live 2016. Hmm. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's going to be good. <laughs> Thank you.